Hello, um, welcome to my home. It's really nice to see you. Today we're just going to have loads of fun, so don't stress. We don't have to worry about what the final thing looks like. We're just going to have a chance to play, be creative, and do something from home that kind of celebrates being outdoors. And that could be in your garden, if you're lucky enough to have a garden, or your local park. So I want us to kind of get outside, enjoy nature, and then to create some artwork from nature we've seen. So, today we're going to make beautiful Matisse collages. So Matisse was an amazing artist. I'm so inspired by him. And he used to, in his very old age, he was quite infirm, he was bedbound, and he'd create these enormous, huge painted sheets of paper. Um, his assistants would do it from him, and he had a long stick, and he'd kind of dictate from the bed what he wanted done, and his lovely assistants would kind of paint the pages for him, exactly how he wanted them. So that's where we're going to start. He would then kind of use scissors, as a way of drawing to kind of cut out these amazing shapes. So we're gonna make a collage, a tulip collage. So we're gonna celebrate the tulip flower. It's really easy to draw, that's why we've picked it. And we're gonna create painted pages, we're gonna snip, we're gonna cut, we're gonna tear, and we're gonna create lovely collages. So I've got all sorts of bits here. Um, they're all beautiful De La Rami products. Um, I predominantly work in System 3, so I'm a professional artist, and I love the System 3 paints. We've got some System 3 paints, some inks, oil pastels, bits and bobs. You raid your cupboards, you see what you've got. You don't need all the stuff I've got here, but have a look and scrounge around your cupboards and see what you've got. And then using whatever you've got, we'll work together and make a collage. Okay. First steps are, we're gonna create some painted pages. Now these are just a really loose, easy, quick entryway. Like we don't have to get too concerned with them. So we're just gonna make a start. So I'm using this lovely paper. Mm, really, really beautiful, thick watercolour paper, but whatever you've got is fine. If it's a bit thin, it will go a bit wrinkly, but um, I've just chopped up some little bits, and then this is what I'm going to make my collage on. This is a lovely watercolour board, but we'll start out here. I'm a really messy worker, so let's see how long it takes for me to tip over some water. Um, so I've got, um, my favourite colour is pink, so I love pinks and reds. Um, so I've got three System 3 paints here. And this is what I'm going to use to kind of make these kind of shapes and collages. I'm also going to use a little bit of green. I've got some white um, because my flower is going to be kind of ready, pinky, orangey, yellowy. We'll see what happens. And then um, obviously I'm going to need the green for the leaves and the stems. So I'm going to start out doing some pages just with the kind of reds and pinks. So I've just got an old plastic lid from the recycling. And we can get these kind of beautiful mixing palettes. Use whatever you've got and I'll source them. Um, now these are lovely because cross system three, doesn't matter what you pick up, if you pick up the inks or the heavy body or the light body paints, the colours are the same across the range so it's really easy to work with. So I've got some red and some pink on here ready to go. Uh, I've got some water. Now this is acrylic paint. Acrylic paint is the best, it's my absolute favourite. So you can use it really, really thick, like oil paint, or you can water it all the way down so it's like watercolour, so you've got loads and loads of um, opportunities to create different effects. And also, because we're doing collage, we can relax. Because if we don't like it, or we've done something wrong, we just chop out another bit, stick it over the top, and keep collaging, keep laying it up, covering up our mistakes. That's why we can just enjoy today. We really don't need to worry. So, I need a paintbrush. Um, this one's a lovely one, and some water. Okay, so we're going to have a bit of a think about um, creating these painted pages. Now, there's all sorts, this is a lovely thing, you can also grow them with the kids and all do it. And you can kind of work on this across a couple of days, maybe in front of the TV you do your paper, uh, your sort of painted pages, and then it might be that after a few days you've got enough and you're going to kind of move forward. So you don't have to do this all at one go, you can do it in little bite-sized bits. So I'm going to, I think, lay down a kind of, I've really watered this down, so I'm putting loads and loads and loads of water in there to make it a bit like watercolour. And then I'm going to do what's called a wash, which is when you lay down a, a really kind of lovely kind of layer of paint. I'm get, what I don't want is too much white background because I'm going to want some really rich paint on here. So I'm going to, so you can see how watery it is, I'm making a mess everywhere. That's how watery it is. I put loads and loads of water in there. And then you're going to paint all over this paper. So, add add more water. So I could also add a little bit of neat, a little bit of neat paint over the top, 
blend it in because it doesn't have to be uniform so I'm going to chop it up anyway a bit more of this okay that's a nice background I'm getting pleased with this I might put in a bit of this up here but I'll tell you what I think I'll do as well let's put in a bit of this nice sand pink colour obsessed with pink I'm obsessed with pink since I was a child never grown out of it okay so lovely I'm going to leave him to dry for a sec start on the next one um, I think I'm going to paint this one quite thickly so I'm, I haven't watered this down at all and you can see what a difference it makes now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get an old I found I've raided the recycling I've had all sorts of different bits and bobs so you have a look and you'll see what you can find I've got a toothpick you can scratch with a toothpick so you can create these sort of fantastic textures and shapes and just scribble don't worry too much about it so that bit will look really good chopped up my collage there we go that's called scraffito that's when you kind of scratch through it's a you see it quite a lot even in ceramics as well it's a really lovely technique so I'll add a bit more into this one like that. There we go. A bit more there. Now this one's drying a bit more. Oops, if I can grab it. So what I'm going to do now is I can add some cutting near the top. So I think for this one, I'm just going to do dots. Could you see I made a bit of a splosh there? That's quite nice actually. Put a bit more on. And then some dots as well. Simple dabs, dots. So this is called wet in wet. You can kind of see that the paint below is still a bit wet. So when I apply the paint above, it's kind of bleeding, merging out. That's wet in wet. If it was completely dry and we'll put dry paint over the top, it would be dry and dry. You do wet on dry, wet on wet. This is wet on wet. More dots. There might be some stripes as well. these to dry. I think I'll get some yellow now. Ooh, nice big brush. There's still, I'm a bit of a mucky worker, there's still quite a lot of paint on here so if I just dip it in the water there'll be enough to kind of put down a bit of a coloured background to start with. I'm not worried about being neat because I'm sniffing all up, remember, so these are just the backgrounds. And that's what you can do in front of the TV or with music going or whatever, it really doesn't matter, you don't need to get precious about it at all. Oh, I really like that pink. Right, let's put some yellow in there. So I think I'm just going to do some scribbly swirls. And you're sort of blending the paint directly onto the paper. Put some red dots. Dashes. I might leave a white background on this and just do. But I don't want too much white paper stain. You can see on the paintbrush there's some yellow, there's some pink. It's actually a really nice job to do on a day when you want to do something creative. You've just got absolutely no brain power at all. So maybe you've had a really long day and you just want to feel like you've done something just for you, something really creative. 
um, but you just, you either don't know what to paint or you just, you don't want to think got to concentrate on really. So an activity like this is lovely because it's quite meditative really. You can just relax and enjoy the process of putting paint on paper, enjoy the way it feels, enjoy the kind of butteriness of these lovely System 3 paints against the page. And I actually like petals, don't I? And don't, don't stress too much. You're going to do sheets and sheets and sheets of these, and some of them will be better than others. And that's fine. Let's see what else I've found in my recycling. So this is an old um, a mouse wash cap. Caps are really, really good. So I could paint this with a quite thick paint. Paint all over the cap like that. Corks are good. Corks are really good. And then you can kind of print with it. It's quite nice when it runs out. Okay, and then we've got, this one's not so good because it's got these little bits, but I have got another one, this one, it's a lid of an old drinks bottle, so you could again paint here, but I want to try and paint this rim and print just the rim, so I'll grab another piece, I could do it over, this bit actually would be good. So it shows up a bit more, a bit too close to the background colour. Oh, I like that. That's nice. Okay, I'll put in some white now, I think. Oh, loads of white. Got carried away. Zigzags, I think, next. You can see that by not mixing it in the palette, but just dipping your paintbrush into those different colours at once, it's a bit like those. Um, those crayons you've got at school that had all the different colours all on one lead, like rainbow pencils. Okay. I'm going to go to the cross hatching and hatching. So, hatching is where you do, oh, let me put in a bit of water so you can see what I'm doing a bit more so it doesn't skip the dry paint. You can kind of do stripes. So, these are stripes, so it's hatching. Cross hatching is when you start doing stripes in the other direction, like this. Makes a grid, really. And you can 
keep hatching, keep cross hatching, if I can draw on the diagonal. On the other diagonal. It's, um, it's actually a lovely thing to do because you very quickly end up with like loads and loads. So keep looking over what you've done and sort of think, oh, is there anything else that would be quite good? So I think a bit of yellow on this one would be good because it seems a bit predominantly pink. I'll start on this one. Um, I'll just do some. These are Q-tips or um, cotton buds, we call them in England. Grabs in the paint. They make really good dotters. Green one, I? I need some green. I do this. That kind of ties everything together. And you want to make sure that the kind of colours are making sense together so when they all come together they'll be fairly harmonious and nice. Nice as a group. Okay, a bit of green is in. Uh, I think I'm gonna just have a bit of fun with this. Nice. I just put the neat paint directly on the page and then I'm just dipping my brush in the water and you can see the difference in having it thick and having it thin and how easy it is just to play with. Okay. There's my textured sheets all done. I'm already completely covered, so I'm going to have a bit of a tidy up. beautiful brushes standing in water it really ruins them and at the end I mean I, I don't clean them very well whilst I'm still painting but at the end I clean them really well and really funny about my brushes so um, after I've used them I use shampoo <laughs> and I um, I sort of rub it all in what you want to do is try and make sure you get it out of this bit that's where like the bristles go into the um, kind of neck of the brush you really want to make sure you clean all that properly clean it really really well and then you reshape it with your fingers so you like with your hair, you sort of make it wet, um, put the shampoo in, rinse, 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 wash, 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 until it comes out completely clear. You can't see anything, you're happy with it. Reshape it using your fingers and then leave it standing up in a pot to dry so it holds its shape really nicely. If you look after your brushes, they last, they really last, but if you don't look after them, I mean, it's good to have some that are a bit sort of fuzzy at the edges because they can get good techniques with them. So it's not the end of the world if you, if you forget to wash them up and they get a bit dodgy, but Brushes are, you know, these brushes are very beautiful, so look after them, they will last. They're a massive, um, I mean, I've, I've had some brushes that I've had for absolutely years and years and years and years, and if you take care of them, they will last. Okay, so we've got our pattern sheets. Just like to have a bit of a chat about 
um, the different ways to hold your paintbrush because you can get all different effects. So I think that's a really important thing to do. So let me just go and grab some more paper. Okay, so there's lots and lots of different ways you can hold your paintbrush and you'll get all different effects. So it's a really good thing to think about because I think what we tend to do when we paint is we sort of, because we haven't done a lot of this, haven't done it since we were kids, you sort of pick it up as though you're going to write a book, as if you're going to write a, a note, the way you hold a pen to, to write something. And actually, you can hold it like that, that's absolutely fine. But if you try out loads of different ways of holding it, you get all different effects. So let's have a bit of a think about the way we hold it. So um, you could just hold it normally, like you're going to write someone a letter, you know. That's fine. You might want to hold it really high up at the tip because you'll have less control. Oh, you can see how hard it is for me to control it. And you get a much sort of wobbly or wonky line, which you might like for something, especially like kind of natural forms and trees and things. You've got less control. Now you might want to hold it as close as you possibly can down the bottom. That changes it again. The other thing we can think about is um, using our wrong hand. So I'm left-handed, I'm a lefty, um, but swap hands. So whichever is your dominant hand, I want you to swap over. Look, and try again. So much of painting is play. So we're just playing. And what I don't want you to do is kind of um, get worried about what it looks like or whether it's good or not. I mean, I do this for a living, I'm a professional artist, and loads of what I do is absolute rubbish. You have to do loads and loads of paintings, every now and then you do a great one, and you're like, ah, oh, it's amazing, brilliant, you're so happy. But if you get too caught up in what it looks like, you won't enjoy it, and you, you won't keep going. So the way you get good at anything is practice, so you've just got to enjoy the process, keep going, keep enjoying yourself. And really, it doesn't matter what it looks like, you're just doing it for pleasure. So we've tried holding it like you would write, we've tried... Um, holding it right at the tip, we've tried holding it here, we've tried using our other hand. The other thing you think about is speed. So if you do something really, really fast, oh, it's quite nice where it runs out. You can see this is called dry brush technique. And this is where the brush, so this, is, this is a very loaded wet brush. It's loaded with paint. There's lots of paint in there and it's very rich. And here the paint runs out, so I've used up loads of it, and you turn into dry brush technique which means you can see there's not enough paint on the brush and it skips and that's such a lovely texture for bark or that sort of thing. So that was going very fast. So if I go absolutely painfully slowly, it can look really different. So speed, the way you hold it, all of this have a huge impact. So just play with that. I'm going to add a bit more to this one because I think it's sort of not very useful as it currently is because it's got too much white space on it. So I think I'm going to do some splatting on it, which you might not have done since school. Or play for it even. That's a lovely one to look. If you're in a temper with someone, oh, that's a lovely thing to do. And then I'm holding the end. Just, you can't hear me because I'm smacking the table too much. I'll stop for a minute. Just play. Just see what you can do. Have a nice time. Don't worry too much. When you were a kid, you just used to enjoy the physicality of it and enjoy the fact that there was a white page and nothing there, and then you moved your wrist and your fingers and your elbow your whole arm and you made these beautiful coloured shapes. Let's go back, let's just do that. Like, that's what this bit is all about. We're not precious, we're not worried. Okay, loads of sheets. Now you can either leave them to dry, or if you've got no patience like me, go and grab your hair dryer, give them a quick blast and they'll all be ready to go. Get paint on this. So, okay, so we've got all our lovely painted sheets that are currently drying. So the next thing we're going to do is draw a tulip. Now, nobody panic. This is the bit where people get worried and you really don't need to um, because we've picked a tulip because it's super easy to draw. And the lovely thing about flowers is they all look a bit different. Some of them are a bit skew with, some of them are a bit wonky. That's absolutely fine. So I've got, I've got so many lovely things to choose from. I can't choose what I'm going to draw. 
Um, I've got these lovely, yeah, I think I'm gonna use one of these lovely pencils. So this is a 2B. So when you buy, I mean, these, these are lovely drawing pencils, but when you buy um, pencils for drawing, they're a bit different from the pencils you might use for writing a letter or whatever. So normal pencils are HB, and that means they're sort of in the middle. They're not too hard, they're not too soft. Um, B means soft, so you get HB, and then you get 2B, 4B, 6B, 8B, 10, and they get softer and softer and softer, which means they get, they're, they're sort of, the lead is very, very soft, which makes a really thick black mark. So you've got HB, 2B, 4B, HB, the other end is H, H for hard, that's easier to remember. And that again goes 2H, 4H, 6H, 8H, as you get harder and harder and harder. And the harder lead, well, it's hard, so you get a thin line, and it's also more silvery grey, so the really soft, um, pencils, the two, four, six, eight, B pencils get blacker and blacker and blacker, and these ones get silverier and thinner lines. These ones are thicker lines. So two B is the standard pencil that you would draw with because it's quite easy to rub out or erase, and it, I mean it feels quite nice. It's not too soft. It's not too hard. So but if, if all you've got at home in the kitchen drawer is a HB, it's absolutely fine. But I like two B pencils, so that's what I'm drawing with here. So to draw a tulip, let's not put it off. What you're going to do is you can definitely do it because you are going to draw a smile or a U shape. So I'm gonna draw a nice U shape here. Just like that, very, very easy. You can see mine is incredibly wonky. Yours will be better than mine. And then it's gonna need a stem, easy. And then it's gonna need some leaves. Now, you're just sketching it, remember, because you're gonna glue and collage all over it. So don't worry about it too much if you don't like the way it looks. And you can also always erase it all the way down. So I'm gonna have so tulip leaves are sort of, so I've done a bit of a wiggly line there. Tulip leaves are that lovely sort of thick, flat kind of shape. I'm gonna have another one here, and it's gonna fold over like that. There we go. So that's gonna be my tulip shape. So then that's gonna be a little bit thicker, like that. And then the way that we turn it into a tulip at the top is you're just gonna create two crescents, so two, Shapes like that. So there's one, there's two, like that. And then you can have uh, another one. So you've got one kind of going like that. Let's do a wiggly bit over the top. So really you want it to come from here, so do that. Once you've done your crescents, then you can fiddle with him a bit like that. I'm gonna have him come off a little bit like that. And then come off a little bit like that. So we started out with a U shape. We did two crescents and then we joined it up here. So now we've got the two petals, and I think I'm going to take him a bit more like this. You can fiddle with him once you've done him. And then you're going to have, I'm going to have a few more petals coming over here. So have one that goes like this, and have one that goes like that, and then one that goes like that. And that can be my tulip. So let me just quickly darken him off so you can see what I've done. Okay, so that is my tulip drawing. So what did we do? We drew a U or a smile. We had two crescents, then we sort of fiddled with them to make them a bit more organic. Fiddling with them just means a bit of a wiggly line. You see, I kind of see I've done a wiggly line down here. We just did a straight line going down to the stem, and then we did these two kind of two leaves going off. So this is going to be what I'm going to collage now. And I've got all my lovely painted sheets that I can work with. Now for collage, you can cut, you can tear, Got some nice scissors here. Move him out of the way. Move him out of the way for now. Right, so I'm going to start out with the petals. So I'm going to start out doing a bit of cutting. Now, what you could do if you wanted to be accurate, I mean, I think you've got the measure of me now, and you know that I'm not. I've got the measure of me now, you know I'm not terribly accurate. Um, but if you wanted to be accurate, you could trace the shapes and then reverse them and um, get it exactly on your drawing. This drawing for me is just a guide. I'm not too worried if I go out the lines, it doesn't bother me. Now, this is exactly what Matisse would have done. It's sort of, well, I'm having a go at doing what amazing Matisse did, um, which is drawing with scissors. You're using scissors like they're a pencil, really, and you're gonna draw lots of lovely shapes. So that's gonna be, that one can go there like that. And keep all your bits, because they're kind of useful. Mm, I like this one. So that's kind of, you can see that mine's still a bit wet. So 
do it handy. You can always trace it. Or if you're not confident enough to just draw freehand using scissors, which I absolutely get. I've done this for a long time, so I've had lots of practice. But if you're not feeling so confident with doing it that way, you could always draw it on lightly with pencil, draw on your shapes, and then you'll sort of have a guide and you'll know what you're cutting out then. So you might prefer to do it like that. Mmm, the colours are lovely. Okay, I think I prefer him like that. And yeah, like that. I can make him a bit skinnier though. And say if I completely messed it up and went wrong and didn't like the bit I just cut out, well, it's fine. I mean, if I've already glued it down, it doesn't matter. I can stick something over the top of it, or if I haven't, I'll just do a new one. It really doesn't matter. Okay, now I'm going to do some more petals in the middle. Mm, I do really like this. And you can see them be left with loads and loads of leftovers. So this is a great technique. You could, you could, you could do loads of these and make lovely cards for people. I have a thing where I call it postcard factory. Because um, I send so many cards every week. I send, I don't know, probably four or five cards because um, all my friends have got lots and lots of glorious children and there's so many children that constantly have birthdays. So I send loads of cards, but I've got in the habit of making them now because it's just getting, it's getting crazy. So I, and people love getting handmade cards. So I just, every now and then I'll, get a burst on and I'll make loads and loads and loads of cards and send them off to people for their birthdays or anniversaries or whatever. Okay, that looks quite nice peeking out of there. yellow dot on there. Oh, he needs to be a bit skinnier. Hang on. Oh yeah, I like that. I like that yellow dot poking up top. And then a bit of this one with the dry brush. A bit of this one. Oh, I do like this one. Okay, a bit of this one. Oh yeah, really happy with that. You can sort of see it coming together. Um, so I'm gonna, before I forget what I'm doing, I'm gonna get him glued down. Um, whatever glue you've got hanging around is fine. So. You can imagine if you were doing loads of these making cards, how quick it would be to make loads. Oh, that's oh no, that's right. Make loads and loads of these lovely cards, and people would just people really treasure things you've made.
you can see I'm getting paint everywhere, but you can tidy it up later. I don't know what it is I like more, artwork or making a mess. They seem to be one and the same with me. Okay, great. Right. Okay, so we can see that out of all these lovely painted sheets, I've now been able to construct this tulip head. So now we've got to do the stem and the leaves, that's fine. We've got the hang of it now. So this, I'm going to put the lid on this. So the stem was really just a straight line, so I'm just going to cut a straight strip out of the green that we made. I like the way it's darker at the top. Okay, so let's get some glue on here. Okay. Show you what I've done. So you can see we've got the tulip head and we've got the stalks next to the leaves. Now you could either cut out two really big leaves or you can make it up. Loads and loads of teeny, teeny bits, a bit like a kind of mosaic. Um, I mean, I'm sure you're getting bored of me wittering on, so I'm just gonna, I don't know if I've got, no, it's not quite big enough to do it all in one bar. Glue on him, get rid of that pencil and my paintbrush. Do the top bit now. See, I've completely gone out the lines, but that's fine because we're going to um, do some more painting and stuff over the top, so it's just a guideline. If you wanted it to be accurate, again, you can do it with tracing paper and that sort of thing. Um, but I just am a bit slapdash and I just enjoy the making, and I don't like anything that slows me down, so I'm not very accurate. So I make mistakes constantly and I just cover them up afterwards. See how far that gets me. Quite a long way. Yep, glue them down. We'll do for 
does fit. There we go. Okay, let's see hands. But the bones of it, oh, he shouldn't be on there. The bones of it is done. So you've got a really mucky, but really lovely tulip cards, which is exactly what we wanted. Coloured sheets, thinking about Matisse, thinking about drawing with scissors, having fun playing, creating shapes and textures, thinking about how we hold the paintbrush, thinking about our speed, thinking about grabbing stuff out of the recycling to kind of print with or paint with. So we've got our tulip painting. The next step is we're just going to add an embellish. So I'm going to, I've got some lovely coloured pencils here. I've also got some oil pastels and I've obviously got all my paints. So I think to go around the tulip, I think I'm going to use coloured pencils. Yeah, what do I want to do? I like this red. So I've got, I've got red and yellow orange so is that the red so I'm gonna come in here obviously not quite dry yet but as we know I have no patience Now what you can see I'm doing here is I'm pressing really hard when it gets to the edge and I'm easing off the pressure so it kind of blends out a bit. This is a really nice watercolour board so it's picking up the texture of the board underneath which is lovely. gold stuff on here maybe. We've got a nice pink. So for now I'm just gonna keep it more to the ground.
So now I've done a really splishy, sploshy background. And we're just going to keep adding and embellishing. You keep going until you're happy. Keep going until you think he's finished. Only you can decide that in your picture. I must admit, I do use my fingers quite a lot for painting. Um, I don't know why. I think I um, just let it grow out of it. I like the way it feels. <laughs> and I like the kind of control in them you can get. Just moving for that gold so we're losing the stem, but also we can grab a bit more green and overlay it and put it on the back. If you've made any mistakes with bits that you don't like, just collage over it, chop out another bit, stick it over the top, it doesn't matter. So I initially did a really rich green background, going over that now with gold. And I like the way the green is kind of poking through behind. I might put a bit of white on the top as well. And so then you'll have these two colours that kind of peek behind the gold and the green. You can see how well I if I hold it up you can see it. you can see how well that these acrylic paints hold their shape and their texture when you use it really really thick it's just like oil paint but obviously it, it's, it's much easier to use it doesn't have all the fumes and the hassle of oil paint so you can get a you know that's the lovely thing about acrylics you 
by acrylics, you've got oil paints and watercolour paints thrown in for free <laughs> because if you use them neat, they're just like oil paint. You want them done just like watercolours, so it's great. Okay, Ugh. dirty. Show you where I'm up to. So you can see that we've got our painted shape, our lovely tulipy, pinky, orangey, red um, painted sheets up here. Then we've got the green coming down here for our leaves. And then I did a green washy background, loads and loads of water. And then I put, using my dirty fingers, gold over the top of that. Now I need to have a bit of a think whether it's finished or not, if I'm going to add some more bits to it. Hmm, I think I might put a little bit of white in. So I've got some white in this yoghurt pot. And maybe around the edges. Trying to find a clean finger because they're all <laughs> really dirty. Bloody. All my fingers gradually. Find a clean one. Ish. Okay, so I'll show you what difference that's made. With the white, I really like that now. Mm. So as you get closer, you need to almost slow down. Um, to sort of be a bit more thoughtful once you get near the end. Um, maybe you don't, but I do because I have a terrible, because I work really fast, I have a terrible tendency of spoiling things because I just keep going and I don't really, I'm enjoying doing it, I don't really worry too much about, don't, don't really think, oh, maybe I should stop now and just keep going because I'm really nice guy. I'm just picking out some of the edges because we've got a bit lost the gold the, so the actual shape of the plant will be a bit more obvious oh there's a big blob of gold on there take it again the acrylic's very quick drying as well which is nice so it's not going to take forever to dry and it doesn't doesn't have sort of funny fumes it doesn't smell funny it's it's really easy to wash up like water it's just a really easy paint to sort of use around the house okay i think i might be finished she says grabbing something else to fiddle with just gonna do a bit of drawing on here i think yeah she says drawing on it's good enough. It's finished. So thanks for joining me today. What we've done today is we've made a painted collage. We've been really inspired by Matisse. If you don't know who he is, Google him. The most incredible painted collages. I've been really lucky to see some of them in galleries. So you've created lots and lots of sheets. So you can see I've finished mine. I've got, I could do loads more. I'll probably do about four or five more today. So again, great for making cards if that's what you fancy doing. So we've played with paint, we've tried using different paint brushes, we've tried using scissors as though they're a drawing material, we've 
played with colour, we've used System 3 paints, we've used um, Dale Rowney sketching pencils and coloured pencils, beautiful brushes that I now, I promise I'm going to go and wash up properly. I'm also going to wash my hands. Um, next time we're going to be using inks and all sorts of other bits and bobs, some exciting stuff over there. So today was an introduction. My name is Kerry Lemon. Thank you for joining me. I've had a great time. Thanks so much to Dale Rowney. Bye.